We're breaking down 2017 by Fortet today. Now, right before we hop into it, I just wanted to remind you that I have an EP coming out with Anitha on our label Mama Told Ya. It's four tracks, vinyl pre-orders are available now, and you can hear previews of the tracks on SoundCloud. All of this in the description below. So go ahead and please check that out if you've been liking my channel and want to support then, you know, this is a cool chance to buy a new record. It's going to be tight. Lots of fast techno on there. Some crazy stuff going on. Yeah, so please check that out. All right, let's hop into the track. Okay, very simple. Simple drum beat. Got the kick pattern, 2-4 with the snare, hats going, lots of swing to the hats. You can hear them like they, uh, they're they not very much like super on the grid. And they have this little like slide thing that's happening before the snare. Well, I guess this is actually like a little hit. It just adds a little more rhythm instead of just if you had if you didn't have this I think it would be a little more straightforward. This just adds a little bit of swing slash a little rhythm. Maybe that's a better way to describe it. Then we have this chord just playing on every beat, uh, very consistent. Do do do. I feel like this instantly you instantly have a sense of like anticipation going on. And I also put this green thing down here. There's a lot of noise. I just put lots of vinyl noise. There's a lot of noise in the recording as well. So okay, we're gonna do that for four bars, and then we're gonna help keep it interesting by adding a bass line and these like flute sounds and some little vocal stuff. By the way, the project file for this and the MIDI clips are free. Here's how you get them. So you're going to type in patreon.com. I'm going to go Alex Wilcox music tutorials. Now, if you want to be awesome, you'll, you'll do one of these. But, you know, these are free. So you can just scroll down to recent posts by Alexander Wilcox. And you can click the link and you can download these uh, project files. That's how you do it right there. You click that. Tell me if there's a problem. It should work fine. And if you feel so inclined and you want some other stuff, check this out. You can give get track feedback from me. You can get some dope samples. There's actually over 40 now. I need to update that. Uh, there's Sounds of Detroit, Sounds of Berlin, Sounds of Austin, blah, blah, blah. For three euros a month or like I think it's like three dollars, something like that, US. Then you get a few of these samples, but you also just help me out and that's really dope. And then if you want to do more like 30 euros a month, you also get a one hour private lesson with me. You get track feedback from me and you get all the sounds, 40 plus sounds, a lot of cool ambient stuff from Berlin, Austin, Detroit, Ann Arbor, Toledo. And I got a nice zoom recorder and they sound great. I'm using them in a lot of my productions and uh, you can use them too if you do the Patreon stuff. But yeah. Okay, before we talk about that cool melody, I want to talk about the bass line for a second. And that's just because it's it's more or less doing this like four bar loop and we're having it start on this F sharp. Uh, I, th I think it's an F sharp. I think I actually mapped the MIDI on this one to be more or less like pretty close to the actual notes being hit. Uh, usually I just throw it up real fast and don't even pay attention to that. But um, I wanna point out how even though it's generally repeating the same idea, like look, we have that F sharp starting here, we have it starting here. We have starting here, we have having here. There's different notes in between. So like, just notice here uh, the difference like in this bar versus this bar. Or this bar and this bar. And again, I'm referring to the bass line. I think that's nice. If you've never, if, if you're sometimes making loops in your I mean, it depends what you're doing. Sometimes it's it's totally fine and dandy to just have the exact same bass line playing over and over again. But sometimes it can be cool, kind of like in this track, to have your bass line have some different filler notes just to add a little more, um, like, a little more spunk maybe, a little more kind of like a, like a real live, like, electric bassist or 
someone like that was was playing it they might add their little flourishes here and there so that can be cool sometimes if you never do that but uh yeah i just want to point that out because it's gonna it even even over here it changes too and i think that all these little flourishes just add something nice to this track now we have this little like flute sound that's just kind of playing consistently and then these little like vocal things it sounds like a little reverse vocal and then a little proper vocal hitting on the proper vocal like maybe it's still reverse but it's hitting when the snare hits so it has a little like ah. it might still actually just be one reversed vocal but we have vocals going on okay little flourishes adding a little more uh you know keep help helping keep this loop that we established here interesting by all of these elements now we're going to get the introduction of this melody because again you can't just do this forever right you're going to get bored eventually <laughs> Okay, so I want to point something out because honestly, I wasn't able to figure out exactly what was happening here. Maybe some of y'all have an idea. If so, post it in the comments. Um, so like I said, usually we're having this bass line start on an F sharp and uh, like the F sharp is kind of like the main note holding us down here. We have the F here, we have the F here. It's ha happening every two bars that we're getting that nice F sharp. But then something interesting happens. Um, basically, in the middle of this melody, that changes a little bit. Because not only do we have the F sharp happening, we always have a drop down going on afterwards. Right? So you have do, 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 do. However, during the middle of this melody, the drop down happens where the F sharp normally happens. Just see what I mean? Listen. I can make it look more like this. It's kind of more like that. Yeah, and that's just interesting because it kind of like it breaks the pattern of the bass line that we've normally had. I just thought that was kind of interesting, especially as we get to the end of this. We'll we'll talk about what happens. Um, but in a more general sense, in a more like in case I got a bit confusing there, don't worry. I'm going to return to this this whole conversation. We basically kept the track interesting by adding in this melody, and then we're having it play a second time. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to return to this whole situation over here because notice we have this little break. So we just had this big melody. It's really beautiful, whatever. Now we want to chill for a second before we get hit with it again, just because, I don't know, adding that break might just help give us a little more time to relax and then help this be more exciting again because it was so great. We want to hear it again. But if you've done other, if you've watched any of my other breakdowns, you'll notice that usually when we're having like breaks or something like this, there's oftentimes like a four bar break, two bar break, one bar break, eight bar break, usually something like this. But here you kind of have this like three or three and a half bar break, however you're going to consider it. And I think this is why I'm curious about this baseline. And again, if, if if one of y'all has like a really rational explanation of, oh, this is exactly what's happening, and this is why Fortet did it, then, you know, let me know. But uh, I'm just not so sure. And in the, maybe it doesn't matter that much. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some of my guesses. But notice how at the end of this, so this is like a four-bar phrase, right? This main melody. 
And at the end of it here, you have this little rattling thing. But here you don't. And I also want to note how, look, at the end, you have that F sharp in the bass line again. And we were getting that F sharp at the very beginning, remember? F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp. So in a way, maybe because we kind of like had this premature drop down here, we like reset the phrasing of the bass line. So by the time we're at the end of an eight bar loop or of a four bar loop, we're kind of like starting over already in the bass line, if that makes sense. Like it, it's almost like this is normally, you know, over here. <sighs> yeah, I know it's kind of weird, <laughs> but um, I'm just mentioning this because perhaps this is why this gap is funny because it almost sounds like this whole chunk here is not an eight bar chunk, which would kind of make sense with what we're normally used to dealing with. It's kind of like a seven and a half bar chunk. Again, just listen to this last part and listen how it kind of seems like reset here, even though we're still in what would normally be like this phrase. <laughs> Another thing I could guess is that maybe, I don't, I don't know if, if y'all know a little more about Fortet's production style, let me know, but maybe there was clips like in this view, in the session view, and maybe just clicked the bass line early or something and it sounded cool, or maybe this was like 100% completely intentional, but whatever, that's just a little bit strange. Again, please comment if you have a little more insight on that. But regardless, uh, back to stuff I feel a little more confident talking about, <laughs> the uh, like I said, we have this little breakdown here. Then we're gonna launch back into the melody and let that play a few times. Now, oftentimes when we have a repeating section like this, we'd have an additional something here. I don't think, um, like compared to this section, I don't think we have that at this point yet. And I mean, it seems fine, at least when listening to the track, it still sounds really nice to me. Um, and it seems like it does to a lot of people because it's a very popular song. So, you know, maybe let's just say strength to the melody, strength to the bass line, strength to just the whole arrangement where we can just hear this all over again without any like significant variation from the first time and have it still sound cool. That's what I'm going to say here. Uh, and let's, let's listen again. <laughs> I said it's usually we have like the addition of something else here when we've already had the same section before well there you go you have that happening right over here so now as this melody keeps repeating now for the fifth time in the track third time in this new chunk you're having the introduction of these like pad sounds I call them boards of Canada sounds because they sound like boards of Canada sounds <laughs> to me uh, like something you would hear in a board of Canada track and yeah basically you're just gonna have this floating over the top um, so now we're having another melodic piece added to the game, which just helps keep this melody interesting as we continue on. Leading to the end of this section where we drop out the drums and we just let us kind of float and glide for a bit. <laughs>
pretty cool. I want to just talk about something real quick, uh, especially if y'all are out there and you have a cool loop and you're, you're having like a hard time making a full track out of it. This might be like a cool thing to consider, which is check out how this section differs from this section in terms of feeling. Yes, this section has the addition of the Boards of Canada thing, but it's just interesting how without the drums, you're just kind of floating and gliding. And then when you add the drums back and take this out, you still have so much of the same loop in a way, but it's a totally different feel. Now you're much more grounded and down to earth. Versus this. I mention that because sometimes people might just add and add and add stuff to like try and make their arrangements more interesting or something, which, you know, sometimes that's necessary. But also just think about uh, what your track already has and see if there's ways to just use what you've already got and see if you can manipulate that to get different like emotional responses. That might be interesting. Again, what I mean is you could have all of this junk right over here which is what you basically have here, and you have a totally different feel than this. Um, just by adding and subtracting a few core elements, you can create different vibes. But okay, so now we kind of have like a bit of like a bridge sort of thing, at least it feels like that to me. Where again, we're back to the groove, so we kind of just floated for a bit. Now we want to chill, be a little more grounded, kind of relax, get our feet back on the ground. And now it'd be nice to have like some big, bigger deviation away from this big melody because we're going to return to it. And it would be nice just to like kind of get our mind off of it so we can kind of like forget about this, kind of like a palate cleanser um, so that when we return to it, it's going to sound that much more special because, you know, our brain got taken somewhere else for a while. So here comes this like weird flute thing with the Boards Canada sound. Sweet. Um, so we'll talk about the end real quick. So again, like I said, we had those flutes come in that can really take us away. Then we get back into this nice melody. And then we do it again with the Boards Canada Sound and then with the like pitched up version. If you have Ableton and have a grain delay, I have a, I don't know what DA uh, Fortet even uses, but basically if you have the grain delay and you added this to that, original melody, you could probably get a pretty similar sound. Just turn this up, turn the pitch up to 12 or whatever. It's probably something like that, then you know, mess with the dry wet. It sounds suspiciously similar to this, in my opinion. That's what I would guess. If At least if you were trying to like recreate this sound and you already had a main melody sounding similar to that, throw a grain delay on, put it up an octave, mess with the dry wet. You might get something similar to this higher pitched part. But yeah, so now we're kind of like closing out this track. So we're going to do that melody again. Makes sense that we have the same melody, which is kind of like 
the star of the show here, in my opinion. I think most of y'all would agree. And it makes sense to like have that same melody just modulated a bit to get more exciting and really drive it home at the end of the track. Then we start a fade out, add this weird sound, this weird like sample thing. And uh, yeah, song fades out and it's over. <laughs> so it's a cool track and it kind of reminds me of Roy G. Biv. And um, it's funny because I feel like like this, again, this reminds me of Roy G. Biv because I feel like with Roy G. Biv, when I did the breakdown of that one, I was surprised because it was so simple. It was just this really beautiful melody just cruising for a while, basically. And I feel like this is also just like a really nice melody that's cruising for a while. Of course, that's like a big reduction of it. But um, hey, like this is tight. <laughs> and like, uh, you know, if you want to make tracks like this, um, it, you know, I think it could be cool to kind of see similarities and see how different artists are making similar tracks in their construction. And yeah, it's just kind of interesting. So yeah, 2017, there it is. There it is. Go ahead and check out the new record I have coming out with Mama Told You. I'd really appreciate that. Check out the Patreon. That's all I got for today. Adios.